All right, so it's the 29th of April, 2015. I'm just gonna show you my ride home from work today. So it's a nice sunny afternoon, just after 5 p.m. And I'm starting from near my workplace, near Young and Shepherd in North York Center of Toronto. And my ride will take me from up here down to the area of Toronto where I live, which is near the Young and Eglinton intersection. And I filmed many bike commuting videos in the past. I try and film one of these at least once a month. And I haven't done one yet for April and tomorrow's the last day of April. So I figured it was time that I made an April video. So this road that I'm standing beside right now is Shepherd Avenue and it's a really busy road and it's pretty scary for biking on, at least I find it scary for biking on. So I use this traffic light here to get across and since this isn't very far from my office I just ride carefully along the sidewalk to get here. And once we're across here, the majority of the rest of my ride is all on quiet city streets. So right now we're heading basically in the south direction. I guess we're going a little bit east right now because of the way this street jogs. I didn't take a look at what the temperature was before I left, but I imagine it's around, you know, 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. So comfortable riding weather to be wearing shorts and a t-shirt, which is what I'm wearing. Most of this week has been pretty nice and warm. The beginning of April, the first week or so of April was was really nice and warm and then it got cold again and we actually got some snow. Not any that accumulated, just snow that was in the air. But that just gives you a sense of how cold it got again. And I had switched to wearing shorts and then I had to switch back to wearing pants again. But now I'm in shorts and hopefully I'll be staying in them until late in the season. When I bike to work I wear biking specific clothing just for my route and I carry a change of clothes that are more like office attire that I change into after I get to work. And then of course at the end of the day, I change back to my bike clothes for the ride home. Some people like to commute wearing their, right in their work clothes. I've always preferred to change. It only takes five minutes or so. I'd rather be comfortable for each activity, sitting at my desk and sitting on my bike. So right now we're heading into some strong wind. This area here is kind of known for being a, a bit of a wind tunnel because of all these large condos. And a few times I've had some really, really tough winds where I'd be pedaling and I felt like I wasn't even moving because it all gets amplified by those, by those big buildings.
if there's wind, that's where you'll see it. So I'm just on this little pathway here, which is, I guess, technically a sidewalk. This is what I use to get around the 401 highway, which is our big, busy, many, many lanes across the middle of Toronto highway. Just going under the main section of it right here. It's a long tunnel. Get some echoes off my bell. It's been a while since I've done a biking home from work video. I f find that I tend to do more morning rides than I do afternoon rides. I think the last one I did was in October, uh, on the 31st of October on Halloween. During the winter though, it's kind of hard to film them because in the winter the days are a lot shorter. So with a shorter day, and of course we do the daylight savings adjustment, it gets dark very, very early. I'm just waiting for my chance to get across here and there's a pretty steady, steady flow of traffic that's going across this on-ramp. This is an on-ramp that goes onto the eastbound lane of the 401. But as I was saying, in the winter months it gets dark quite, quite a bit earlier, sometimes as early as, you know, 4.30 or something like that. And I typically don't leave work until five o'clock. And my camera really doesn't do very well in low light situations. Basically, if I put it on on a dark, dark night or when it's close to dusk, most of what you see will just be the street lights and you know the lights from cars and stuff. You really won't see very much scenery. Pretty much all the time, it's always light in the morning when I go to work. I usually leave around between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. So usually it's, even when the days are shorter, that time of the day is usually bright enough. So now we're on a road which is again going mostly in the south direction. This is this right here, it's called um, Old Young Street. The other Young Street, the newer one, the, the one that doesn't have the word old in front of it, is about 100 meters to the right of us. So this Old Young Street in New Young Street run parallel to each other, pretty well parallel to each other in this section here. The New Young Street is not fun to ride on at all though. Very busy, cars move very fast. It's a pretty steep hill, the pavement's not great. So I'm happy to take this alternate route and stay on the quieter streets. So up ahead there's a house that's under construction and I actually showed that in my last commuting video back in, in March. They were just starting to dig the foundation and at this point I believe they have now, they're now working on that foundation. I think they've got most of it poured. Um, they certainly have concrete forms in the ground. It's right here on the right that's where all that um, blue fencing is. I'll do a swoop over in that direction so you can get a look at it. So there it is. I'm sure it'll be a very large, very fancy expensive house. Probably worth multiple million dollars. Maybe 
three or more, I would say, but we'll see when it's done. So we're just approaching uh, the intersection of Old Young and York Mills. York Mills Road, I believe. And we gotta get across this road, but there's no signed crossing, just a stop sign. So it means that I have to wait, wait patiently for a gap. And I think I just missed a nice gap there, but there'll be another one coming right after this BMW. Oh, after this Jeep then. All right, here we go. Sometimes you can wait up to five minutes to get across, but other times you're lucky and you can just get right across. Now there's quite a bit of construction that's going on on this part of my route as well. This says no through traffic. They're doing, I think they're doing work on the water mains over in this area over here. So the road is closed to, to traffic. Although I'm hoping that the sidewalk will still be open. So we can get, still get through. Because if not, it's gonna mean I have to climb back up this hill again. Those guys there were long borders. You can see we got a nice steep hill here. And it's a place that long borders like to come and go really fast down. Huh. That looks very closed. I think the sidewalk on this side hopefully should be open. Oh yeah, wow. Nice big hole in the ground there on the right. And these big metal things that are to the right as well. Those are gonna sit in those holes to keep them. But they must be doing a lot of work here for a long time. They've got that metal thing. I'll just do a loop so we can see on the camera. Nice big hole, right where the two roads meet. So it's inconveniencing twice as many people. But it's probably some kind of a junction point in their piping. So I'm pretty sure all this construction work they're doing over here is all related to water mains underground. So this road here is called Danino. Old Young Street ended back there at that stop sign. And there's actually more construction coming up ahead. And again, I hope this is gonna be open for me to get up. I think it'll probably be the same situation as the last, where the, the, the bulk of the road is closed, but they've left enough of a gap so that you can get through on a bike or someone walking or something like that. Fortunately, they're usually considerate enough to leave a, a passageway when they close things down for construction. So now we gotta climb back up to the other side of the valley after descending down it where those long borders were. And you might notice some funny noises coming from my drivetrain. That's a known problem, and uh, it's happening because when I mount this camera on my bike and I film these rides, I have, you know, all my brake cables and shift cables which hang down in this frontal area of my bike, and they obstruct the view quite a bit. But when I film these, I use some elastic bands, and I pull the cables up and out of the way, so it'll be a nice clear view. However, the way that I've done this today um, has one of the cables doing a funny tight curt turn, which makes it a little bit, makes it act up a little bit when you're shifting. So 
So it just doesn't shift as smoothly, but it still works. And we're almost at the top. Finally, this, this hill seems to take forever if you're thinking about it, but if you're telling a story like I am right now, it just flies right by. Or, you know, if I'm, if I'm thinking about something, you know, as I'm riding home. If you take your mind off the hill, then you just don't even think about it anymore. And don't worry about it, and you're at the top before you know it. So now this little road links right back to Young Street, and you can see there's lots of busy traffic on there. And that again is related, I believe, to the water main stuff they're doing. Certainly in the southbound direction, the direction we're going right now, they have one lane that's closed. One of the two lanes is completely closed coming up that hill. So that slows down a lot of people in the morning. And then going northbound, I think they've got, certainly the whole, the whole thing isn't closed, but I think they close sections of it at times. So on the left, we're just going past the grocery store, Loblaws. It marks about the halfway point for me between home and work. And today I'm gonna to be taking a bit of a different route, one that I've never shown on camera before, and one that I really don't do that often. And it's gonna have me going an extra block on this side of Young. Usually what I'll do here is I'll go kitty corner across to the other side of Young Street and I'll take a road called Jedburg and Duplex for most of my southbound riding. But this time I'm gonna go in the other direction to the west and I'm gonna film the streets over there. Here's our green light. And I think figure rather than crossing to the other side of Young to go this one block, it's a lot easier and safer to just walk the one block to Bon Echo Road, which is just up here. According to the sign, this is the Young Lawrence Village. And here we are. We'll hop back on my bike. And we're gonna go for a short section in the west direction. I go in this direction quite rarely. I usually don't do this way. Um, that's mostly because this route, there's more hills. All right, so I'm gonna make a left here onto Bedford Park. This is another nice neighborhood, big, Median in the middle of the road with big trees in it. Lots of really nice big houses on big lots. It's a nice neighborhood. The subdivision was called Bedford Park when it was built way back in the 30s, 40s, 50s. I'm not exactly sure when. All right, and this road here is called 
Mount Pleasant Drive, Mount Pleasant Road, and it's a north-south street which runs parallel to Young. Up here it's really not a very busy street and it's very wide. It's only one lane in each direction but the lanes are enormous. But as you get further south it becomes much more of an arterial road with two lanes in each direction and lots more traffic that goes on it. I think this, this, this road right in this section here would be particularly easy to accommodate bike lanes since the lanes are so enormous. However, I really don't think there's an awful lot of bike traffic that comes through here. And it really doesn't connect to anything. And if we we're gonna put bike lanes in this section of Toronto, I would certainly rather have them on Young Street because Young Street's got all the destinations that most people want to go to and it also connects with everything including all the transit and all the roads that meet up with it that lead to other places that you want to, would want to go. So it's a I enjoy this part of Mount Pleasant. It's it's pretty nice to ride along. I say in this section here I prefer it to my normal standard route on Duplex and Jedburg. Just because it's so wide. Maybe the cars go a little bit faster here, but it's nice, at least up until this intersection up here, which is Lawrence Avenue, which is our next east-west arterial. And before it continues, it's got what's called a jogged intersection. I'm not sure if that's actually what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. So the, the, the continuation of Mount Pleasant is over there straight ahead where the camera's pointing. So that the two Mount Pleasants don't meet up face to face. So they gotta have this enormous intersection that goes, you know, all the way from over there to over there. And for us to be able to go straight through, they need to shut down you know, all the traffic on Lawrence. So this traffic light has lots of different phases depending on where you are and where you want to go. And it also means that someone that's waiting here and wants to turn right, they have to wait for that green light because you're not allowed to turn right on red here which is something you're allowed to do unless otherwise stated throughout Ontario. All right, I think we're gonna get our green light now. I feel like I've been waiting here for more than a minute now. There we go. So I gotta go right into this left turn lane here. And you can see I've got a green arrow here so I can turn left. And here's the first hill I gotta climb. And now you see that there are two lanes instead of just one. And there's a lot more cars on it. This is actually just repaved. Fairly recently, it didn't used to be this smooth. On this side of the road at least. I 
and back down the hill we go. So as I was saying, I find this this route much much hillier than the other two options that I often take, being Young Street or Duplex Jedburg. Of the three, this is the hilliest. Young Street is a little bit hilly, but much less than this. And then Duplex Jedburg is almost completely flat the whole way across. And that certainly factored in to what makes that my preferred route most of the time. I wouldn't say I'm a person that hates climbing hills, but if I'm given the option of a flat route versus a hilly route, most of the time I'll take the flat one. Depending on other factors, of course. big house there on the right that we went past that's under construction. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my last commuting video back in March, but as the weather gets warmer, you certainly see a lot more cyclists on the road. And I find that pretty interesting the way that it feels to see a cyclist, because in, in the winter, when you're riding, at least up in this area of, you know, North Toronto or North York, you see very few other cyclists. And when you do, it puts a smile on your face because, you know, it's just a, a rare sighting. And there's kind of this code among cyclists, at least in the areas that I ride during the winter, that if you see another cyclist in the winter, you almost always will acknowledge them in some way or another. You know, sometimes it's just a simple nod or a, a wave, or even as extreme as ringing your bell at them sometimes. That doesn't happen too often, but there's always something, right? And then, as you get into the warmer weather and you start seeing more cyclists, you just kind of keep doing that. And the, these are cyclists that don't ride during the winter and they have no idea why you're waving at them. So we're getting pretty close to Eglinton now. And this next road here actually is the road one that I turn at for going home. And actually something neat is happening on this street. Well, for one thing, these, these houses that are over here at the end, on this front lawn over there, you can see there's a white sign behind that big tree. You may have not seen it. But that's one of the Toronto development application signs, which they put in whenever they're going to build or redevelop a site. And someone wants to, a developer wants to tear down those houses and in their place build a some kind of a stacked townhouse that's gonna have 80 units or something like that. So basically you're taking four houses, four units, very large units, houses, and turning them into building a new building that's gonna have 80. So it's a real development thing. And uh, you'll see a lot, almost every single uh, house on this street has these white signs on their lawns that says SOS, and it stands for Save Our Streets. And they've got a website, densitycreep.ca. So they're very much against this uh, development that, that's going in. But the, the real interesting thing that I wanted to show here is this development right up ahead on our, on our left. Um, they're, they're building a, 
an eight-story tower there. I, th I think it's eight stories. Uh, but just yesterday, they just put the crane in there, which is really neat to see. I, I mean, of course, I was at work for most of the day, but I saw them getting started on it at the beginning of the day. They had a, a big portable crane there to do that. And when I got here at the end of the day, the big portable crane was still working and they were still, you know, putting the counterweight and stuff in place. So I'm going to have fun watching that building slowly get built. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed joining me on my ride to work with it being beautiful weather. It's a great opportunity to try biking to work if you've never done so before. Please leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video. And thanks for watching.